Today we're gonna talk about how I save $50,000 in a year. Ooh. Hi friends, welcome to Freedom in a Budget. I'm Kelly and my channel is all about living life well on a budget. And a budget doesn't be constricting, lets you not do anything. No, it gives you freedom. And we are going to get very personal and talk about how I saved $50,000 in a year, which is crazy. And honestly, when I was running the numbers and realized how much we had saved, I started crying and not like just misty eye crying. I mean like crying because if you guys don't know too much about my story, not too long ago, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was behind in my bills. I had my power turned off multiple times. I did not know how to manage money and I just was really, really in a dark place financially. And it was bad and it was scary. And I was afraid to have a knock on the door, which would, could have been a delivery man, but I thought they were gonna come and take all of my stuff because I was so behind on bills. And I know that's not how it works, but when you're that deep in debt and that just deep in financial struggles, that's the fear that you live with. And it was a scary, scary place. And just a couple of years ago, I you know, decided that enough was enough and I had to turn my life around. And I have some videos coming out in the next couple of weeks where I'm gonna go step by step on how I turned my life around. How I was able to go from living paycheck to paycheck in fear, absolute fear, to now winning with money. And contrary to popular belief, it wasn't just getting married and adding on a salary. These changes happened far before Jamie and I got married and we didn't come by in our finances until we got married. And I honestly believe that we were winning with money. I was winning with money far before I got married. So. No, it wasn't just that we combined incomes. There were some really, really drastic changes that happened. So if you want to hear about those stories, stay tuned. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be some really, really fun, great, deep content coming. And I'm going to be getting a lot more raw on this channel. Um, I'm gonna be start sharing some of those those harder stories that I, you know, a lot of times I just wanna give the facts to you guys and talk about, you know, different ways that you can win with money and different ways that you can get ahead. But I don't always talk about the hard times and the things that I've been through. And so I want to kind of share a little bit more about myself in that way and be a little bit more vulnerable with you guys. So stay tuned for that. Also, make sure you stay to the end of the video. I have a giveaway coming up. So I want to share all that with you. So I'm going to give you all the details at the end. So, all right, now to the featured content of how we were able to save $50,000 in a year. First thing we did is cut back majorly on toiletries. Now, I'm not saying that we went without washing our face, our hands, and dish soap and stuff like that. No, I'm not saying that. But I personally was so guilty of just buying toiletries, especially shampoo and face wash anytime it was on sale. I don't know why, but it was a hoarding problem. And I have a whole linen closet full of shampoo. And it was embarrassing when I moved of how much shampoo, conditioner, face wash, and stuff we have. So I vowed to not buy any more until so those are gone. Even though it may be shampoo that I don't really want to use anymore, or there's a really great new smelling one or different one that I want to try, nope not going to do it. So this year we really, really cut back on just those items that we already have some of in the house. You know, are there already items that we can use that we don't have to, you know, use disposable or using cloth napkins versus disposable napkins or paper towels. We have had one roll of paper towels for over eight months now. It is that same role. We just barely use paper towels. And you know, the only time we really ever use paper towels is cleaning up things like grease or different things like that in the pan, kind of like soaking that up. But other than that, we use cloth and we just have dish towels and we just throw them in the laundry like normal and just use them that way. Next thing we did to save $50,000 this year was grow our income. And again, no, not by combining finances or anything like that, but we hustled. Guys, I was out there with mystery shopping. I was meal prepping for my coworkers. I was growing my YouTube channel and blog and putting out these videos. And guys, there's so many times where I don't want to film. Right before now, I didn't want to film. And I sat around for an hour procrastinating, not filming. But, you know, at the end of the day, I got to get hustling. And, you know, I do make a decent income from these videos and my blog posts and all of that. So just getting out there and hustling. Overtime, I asked for overtime and I actually got pulled into a meeting saying I had too much overtime and it was devastating. And all I could think about was, 
oh crap, what about our financial goals? What are we gonna do? We've hit some like, we have these stretch goals that we really wanna hit this year, and how am I gonna do it now if my overtime is cut? So, you know what, I got creative. I pulled my bosses aside and I said, okay, I understand that my particular job right now, we can't justify the overtime, but are there other departments that I can help? And we brainstormed and we were like, you know what? This department could use some help. They can use some overtime. They have some stuff that you can do. Now, it wasn't stuff that I wanted to do. It wasn't stuff that, it was stuff that I had to do some training on. It was stuff that was outside of my scope and outside of what I felt comfortable with. And honestly, some of the stuff sucked and I didn't want to do it, but it was worth the overtime. Guys, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you have to put yourself on the line to make some extra money. Now, not saying illegal stuff, but <laughs> guys, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to do things that you just don't want to. I'll be honest with you. It sucks sometimes, but you got to do it. Next thing we did is ate the same meals multiple, multiple, multiple times, pretty much every single day, five days a week for lunches. And it sucked and I hated it. But you know, at the end of the day, Saving money is more important to me than eating the same meal over in times. And a lot of times I'll think about it, you know, all of my coworkers, not all of them, a lot of my coworkers go out to lunch every single day or get delivery food or we have a cafe downstairs and they'll get that food. And here I am eating my lunch, same food. And by Friday, it doesn't taste as good as it did on Monday. I'll be honest. But you know what? It's 15 minutes of my day and yeah, Sometimes it's not very exciting, not very fun, but it saves so much money by bringing my own food every single day. In fact, one day last week, I was celebrating because I was actually on CBS News and they came out and it just aired. I think it's airing tonight, maybe tonight, but CBS News. So I was excited. I was, you know, my, and it was my first TV appearance and so cool. And so I wanted to celebrate. And so, you know what? I celebrated. I got some lunch that was to go and, and I think it was like a $25 with like delivery and transaction fee and all that stuff for doing online, which was ridiculously expensive. It was like a whole week's worth of lunches and one meal. But my coworkers were so shocked. They were like, Kelly, what is wrong with you? Who is this person? I don't even know who you are anymore. And that just shows how I truly do bring my lunch every single day. I think you could count the amount of times that I brought that I've eaten out at work on one hand over the years, years. And you know what, guys, it saves so much money. And it is really a big game changer in just hitting those goals. Next thing that we did is set weekly savings goals. So we sat down with our budget and said, okay, in order to hit this $50,000, what do we have to be saving every single week? What do we have to transfer into our savings account every single week? We bought a house this year. That was a huge, huge goal that we really, really wanted to do. We had mold in our old apartment and a lot of issues with that. And so we were motivated. We wanted out of that apartment. We wanted out of there quickly and we wanted to buy that house. And you know what? We were actually Able to do it sooner than expected which was really cool so we had weekly savings goals that we had to hit and one of the ways that we were able to do that is staying out of the stores that was a really really big one of just not going into you know target or marshall's marshall's is a big one for me just to kill time you know a lot of times before i would be running early for an appointment or different things like that I'm like oh target's next door i'll just stop in no i'm not going to do that i would rather sit in my car reply to youtube comments something like that than go and kill time because you know when you're killing time you end up buying a couple things. Let's be honest, at least I do. And then when you see that savings grow, when you see that you're making progress and you see your savings account grow and grow and grow, it is motivating. Guys, it is exhilarating when you're seeing that grow and grow and grow. And that makes me want to cut back even more so that I can see it grow. Next thing we did is maybe a little bit weird is I made sure that I followed up on any refunds that we were expecting or any rebates or anything like that. There were a couple times throughout the year that we were supposed to receive a refund and we never did. One example is Jamie's dentist and Jamie had switched over a new insurance plan and his dentist had to bill him the full amount. We paid it in full and then they were going to send it off to insurance and then get a check refunded. So we did all that. Then they said, okay, you're gonna be getting $300, $298 back in a check. And we're like, awesome, this is great. Okay, so then a couple 
months by and I was like, wait a second, I don't think we ever got that check back. And so I had to call up the, um, the dentist and they were like, yeah, we sent that to you. And I was like, can you confirm the address that you sent it to? And it turns out they sent it to our apartment. And I said, can you please look into that? Because I don't have it refunded cash in my, my budget. And they're like, oh, maybe your husband. And I was like, no, 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 trust me. We track every single penny. I don't have it cash in our budget. So can you go and make sure that the check didn't clear? And so they're like, okay. So they said that they'll call me back. Week goes by, no call back. I'm calling back. So I called back and they were like, oh yeah, you were right. We were supposed to call you and we'll have them reissue another check and two. And I said, okay, can you check the address and all of that? So guys, if we didn't follow up twice on that, that's $300 that we would have missed out on. So make sure that you're following up on rebates. So many stores will have these rebates, especially Black Friday deals, those big like appliances, different things like that. They're banking on you, not sending in the rebate. You know, you're saying, oh, when you purchase, that's great. We'll get a couple hundred dollars back rebate, all this stuff. And then you forget and you're like, oh, oh, well, it's a couple hundred bucks, whatever. No, guys, make sure that you're following up with that stuff. Make sure that if you are expecting a refund, make sure that you're putting it in your calendar, your phone calendar, whatever it is to follow up with them to make sure that you get that rebate or that cash back or that refund check. Make sure it's important. Next is finalizing a budget every single month. You guys know that I am a huge, huge, huge person on zero based budgets. You guys know I love my budget report cards and I still budget every single month. And one of the reasons that we were able to hit our goal so fast is that we finalized the budget. So at the end of the month, if we had $200 left over, we were putting that $200 towards our savings. If we had X amount of money that was going towards our savings, that wasn't just like going into a dark hole of our checking account and just, a, it's a buffer. It's a buffer. It's, it's fine. No, that needs to be transferred to your savings account, to your debt, whatever your goal is, you need to make that transfer. You need to make that deposit. You need to make that payment so that you are hitting your goals. If you just let it go into the black dark hole, it's gonna get lost. Trust me, it will. Next is specific spending freezes. So a lot of times people, and I've done this in the past, and I did a couple of years ago, I don't do them anymore, but I would do monthly spending freezes and you don't spend any money outside of your bills, your four walls. Those are great, but honestly, now what we do is specific freezes. So no eating out, no extra entertainment, no X whatever it is and just have those specific categories and you can still spend in other places, but having those categories freeze, they really help you just to hone in on your goal and so they make it more doable and so you're not getting burnt out. And different things like pantry challenges, we saved so much money at pantry challenges, oh my gosh. There are so many meals that you guys can make, guys, from what you have in your freezer, your pantry, different places like that. So many meals and say you had $20 left for the month, you guys can make a stretch. You guys can do it. Well, maybe not if you have five kids, but for a couple like Jamie and I, we could make $20 stretch for a week. And guys, we could probably go and eat three weeks out of our freeze, fridge, freezer, and pantry if, if it really came down to it. Now, it all depends on how serious you are about your goals. You know, how dedicated do you want to get? And a lot of times, you know, you just have these stretch goals and you just have just just this time that you need to be gazelle intense and hardcore and then afterwards you can breathe a little bit and then afterwards you can you know kind of go more to those fuller meals but sometimes guys it's not going to hurt you to you know eat out of the pantry eat some you know chicken that's been in your freezer for a couple months it, it's gonna be fun so i hope that helps i don't know this just kind of got a little intense but guys saving fifty thousand dollars in a year was intense it was a lot but it was so rewarding when we were able to buy this house because of it so now on to the giveaway i am fired up so jamie and i like I said, we have been so blessed this year and we are just so thankful for you guys and we want to give back to you. So what we're doing is a Christmas blessing giveaway and we want you guys to be able to nominate people in your life that are going through some struggles and growing through some stuff. And I have a form on my blog that you guys can fill out and nominate a family, nominate someone that is going through some stuff, going through some struggles. I've already gotten some entries in and whole oh, the tears have been flowing and it doesn't have to be you know a super super sap story it could just be you know 
someone is going through, you know, a job loss or they just lost a family member or, you know, they have a, a disease that they were just diagnosed with or whatever it may be, or maybe they're fostering some, some children or whatever it could be. It could be a waitress that you don't know too well, but we are going to be picking one of those family and then buying them Christmas gifts and blessing them with gifts and their children. And I know that Christmas is just such a fun and exciting time. And a lot of people, they want to be able to give, especially for their kids, but they can't. So we're going to buy them gifts. So Jamie and I are so excited. We have a form on our blog that you can go and nominate that family and surprise them. So we are going to be drawing those names on December 10th. And then after we draw the name, we'll reach out to you if you, if we pick your entry and then we can go and get all the details and the information. So super excited. I'm so, I'm just so thrilled for this. And it is such a blessing for Jamie and I to do, and we can't wait to give back to you guys. So super fun and exciting just a little random acts of kindness that we are doing. So, so pumped. So I'll have the blog post down below in the description box, but it's freedominabudget.com slash Christmas giveaway. So I hope that you will nominate a family that is in need. Share this, get the word out. We want this to be big. We want to be able to bless a family. So we are so excited. And I think I've said that like 10 times, but I am, I'm so excited, you guys. All right, guys, next up is how I went from living paycheck to paycheck, having car repossessed, making six figures a year. I'll see you in that video. Hey, no, no, no.